Option pricing is an important topic in financial management, both in theory and in practice. If you're preparing for ICANN, SFM, or ACCA, AFM, this class is going to be useful for you. So we'll start with the lecture structure. we we'll start from the meaning of option, to parties to an option, types of option contract, styles of option, financial terminologies and option, option platforms, option values, determinant of option values, option pricing and investment appraisal, and we'll solve exam questions. I'll advise you to click the link in the description box to get the exam bullet. So even after you've studied the lecture close to your exam, you have to read the exam bullet. And don't forget to share this video to someone that will find it helpful. So based on the lecture structure, we're to start from the meaning of options, and that's exactly where we're going to start from. In simple English, an option is a choice or alternative. So you can choose between A and B. Now in financial management, an option is a contract between two parties where the buyer of the option has the right, but not the obligation, to deal in an underlying asset at an agreed price and specified date. Okay, you have to understand that you have the right as the buyer, but not the obligation, meaning it's not compulsory to deal in an underlying asset at an agreed date and at a specified price. So there are some important terminologies in this definition, like between two parties. Who are those parties? The buyer and the seller, as you can see, parties to an option. We have the buyer that is the holder of the contract and the seller, the writer of the contract. So in this class, let's assume that you are the buyer, okay? You are the buyer and I am the seller. So the buyer is also the holder. You're the one that would hold that contract. And when you hold that contract, what you are holding is the right, but not an obligation to deal in an underlying asset. Now, another important terminology is underlying assets. What is an underlying asset? It could be anything. It could be this calculator, it could be currencies, it could be gold, it could be interest rates, okay, it could be anything, it could be a plot of land. So that underlying asset, you have the right to buy it, you have the right to sell it at an agreed price. So we would agree on the price today that this calculator will be sold for 2,000 Naira on the 31st of December 2023. It doesn't matter what calculator is selling in the market at that time. We have already agreed. So you need to understand the concept of option first. That is why I'm explaining like this. So we agree that at a specified time, which is 31st December 2023, there's an agreed price, which is 2,000 Naira, that will buy the calculator. So I will write you an option. Okay? We have a contract. So you are holding that option. You are holding that right. Now, on that date, you can choose not you see, but not the obligation. You can choose that I'm not buying it. Maybe you found a place that is at, at a cheaper price, right? That oh, I'm not buying this calculator. I mean, you are free. It's not compulsory. That's why it's the right, but not the obligation. Do you understand? Now, types of option contracts. We have a call option and we have the put option. The call option gives the older the right to buy an underlying asset. So anytime you see call option, it relates to buy. And anytime you see put option, it relates to sell. The call option gives you the right to buy an underlying asset. We have agreed that you are the holder. Okay? I am the seller. So we don't focus on the seller in option contracts. Most of the time, we focus on the holder. Okay? So if you hold a contract, you have the right to buy an underlying asset. You have the right to buy this calculator. If you hold a put contract or a put option, you have the right to sell this calculator. So it's just a buying and selling thing. It does not mean you want to buy a land. It could be that you're selling a land. That on the 31st of December, I will sell this land at 2 million naira. Right? We could actually enter into an option contract like that. You remember what the meaning of an option is? You remember the parties to an option contract. Then the types of option contracts, we have call or put. Now let's go to styles of options. We'll solve questions on the board. Styles of options. We have the European style and the American style. Now the European style is designed to be exercised on the expiry dates. Okay, this is how I memorize it. E, E. So that's how I, try, I tend to remember it so I don't mix it up. European style is designed to be exercised on the expiry date. So if we agree that it is on the 31st of December, that you can buy this calculator for 2,000 Naira. You can only exercise that option on the 31st of December. Do you know what it means to exercise an option? It means to make a choice. 
Oh, exercise your option. You can choose to exercise or you can choose not to exercise. So, American style is designed to be exercised on or before the expiry date. So, we can agree that 31st of December is when this calculator is going to be bought for 2000 naira. You don't have to wait till 31st of December. That is an American style option. So, styles of options we have European style and we have American style. Financial terms and options we have exercise. Or strike price hmm? exercise or strike price is that 2000 naira that we agreed today so the price at which the underlying asset can be bought or sold remember i said it does not mean you have to buy this calculator it could be that you want to sell the calculator and we've agreed on a price so you know when you buy when you have to buy it means you are holding what a call option when you are to sell as the holder it means you are holding what a put option these are things that your lecturer might not come down to explain to you in the class because i mean they have targets with time and all of that so you need to understand this because sometimes you might see a question and it's a call option or it's a put option call relates to buying puts relates to selling so the exercise price or the strike price is the price at which that underlying asset can be bought or sold when exercising the option it makes sense so if the exercise price is beneficial to the holder you are the holder remember i said in sfm we focus more on the holder the customer so if that exercise price is beneficial to you you would exercise the option yes or no you would how would you know if it is beneficial if we agree today that you as the holder you have the right to buy this calculator for 2000 naira and in the future you find a place where they're selling the calculator for 1800 or you would go buy it where they're selling for 1800 it means that the exercise price that we've agreed today is not beneficial for you so you will not exercise yeah because you are holding an option right but you have paid to hold that option that is what we call premium does it make sense so premium is the amount the purchaser or the holder or the buyer right must pay to buy the option that is you are paying to exercise that right you are paying for flexibility to make a choice does it make sense it does make sense the next thing is option platforms very interesting what is a platform it's like something that is carrying something right so option platforms we have two option platforms the exchange traded options and over the counter okay option platform is where option is sold that's where you're going to get option to buy right so the exchange traded options features options that can be bought in a fixed market in a fixed location in a recognized exchange like it's a market for options that's what we call exchange traded options unlike over the counter this over the counter features options that can't be bought in a fixed market it has to be bought through banks individual negotiations you understand those options you buy in the bank it doesn't have its own market like exchange traded options so what are the characteristics of these options what are the features of these options look at standardized contract sizes so those options come in fixed standard sizes like 50 100 200 you cannot sell 49 of those options does it make sense you cannot sell 49 units of those options as we progress in the class you would understand and um, over the counter is customized to the requirements of the customer so when i was doing my exam this is how i learned it standardized customized see this is my exam note this is what i used to pass okay so if i give you anything like exam bullets or any exam summary that i have used just make sure you download it okay so the options you will buy here are always standardized the ones you buy here are customized to your needs. So you can buy 45 units. You can buy 45.6. Do you understand? Now, these ones can be held for one year or less. Max one year, right? That's the meaning of one year or less. Don't forget we're talking about option platforms. So any option they sell in ETO can be held for one year or less. So strict. This one can be held for up to five years. Mm? So just mark the important things. Number three, the options sold on ETO can be resold during the lifetime. That is during that one year. You can say I'm not doing, you sell it to another person. Uh -huh. This one, it cannot be resold. Okay? This one can be resold. This one cannot be resold. For ETO, there's options sold on exchange traded options. There's price transparency and it is determined by the forces of demand and supply. It's like a market thing. 
It's not somebody that just comes and sets the price. It's based on what people want and what there is to offer at the equilibrium. Do you understand? Another feature is that it is available for a limited asset type. So special, like interest rates. That's what I have here. Gold, precious metals, crude oil, currencies. These are the underlying assets. For this over-the-counter, it could be any other asset apart from this, right? This one is obtained through a broker that will charge commission. So brokers are involved in this ETO market. So with that, we are done with option platforms. Now let's get to the interesting parts, which I really, really like. Option values. Option values is divided into three. In the money option out of money option and at the money option so now you understand the concept of option you know the parties to an option so when is an option value in the money you know let's know that there are two words there option and value so you know what option is now then value right that is this option is it valuable is it worth it exactly so when an option is in the money it means gain will be made on the option it means that what it is worth it now how do you know that gain is made on an option back to our calculator we agreed you and i agreed that you will buy this calculator for two thousand naira if by 31st of december this calculator is selling at, at two thousand five hundred it means that it is an in the money option meaning gain is made on that option does it make sense so that option is valuable to you you'll be like ah thank god i agreed down with tolu that's when you see an in the money option out of money option on that date you find out that calculator is being sold for 1,800. Oh, loss is made on the option. You should have not agreed because you've paid a premium. Let's say you've paid premium of 500 Naira. <laughs> Let's, let me go to the back of the notes and explain. Let's say you pay a premium. Premium. That's the cost of the option of 500 Naira. On an underlying asset that's the calculator of um, 2,000 Naira. If by the future, this is 2,000 in the future, the 1st of December, you find out that the asset is cost 1,800. This is scenario A, right? I'm trying to demonstrate in the money option, out of money. Uh -huh. Then let's say you find out that this cost 2,500 and option C, you find out that this cost um, 2,000, the exact money. So we are in, imagining these individual scenarios. Does it make sense? Okay, so in this scenario A, you find out that the calculator is being sold for one eight, but you've agreed that you pay this. Do you know what you're going to do? You run away from this. You go and pick this price, right? Now, this A is a case of out of money. In fact, forget saying this out of money. Just say it's a loss. When you think of it, oh, loss means out of money. Now, this one, when you see this price, you run away from this price. You go and pick your option. It is what? A gain, which is what? In the money option. Now look at this one, 2,000 and 2,000. I mean, it is what? At the money. Meaning no loss, no gain. No, there are three. It's divided into three. No loss, no gain. Right? So let's focus on this. Where is it? Loss. Out of money. You know why it's out of money? Because you've paid premium regardless. So if you think of how much you actually spent, it's what? 500 plus 18 resulting in what 2300 to buy the calculator this is the actual cost when you could have just spent your one eight so you can see it is out of the money option now if you find that in the future the calculator is 2500 you'll be like ah, thank god i tied it down for 2000 so the money you actually spent is two five which is what you still have spent but what if it was two eight what if it was three thousand I know you might be thinking that this concept is crazy, but it actually happens with currencies, with gold, with interest rates especially. That's why I said when we get to foreign exchange, you will see the importance. People do this thing. So it's not just by calculator, crude oil and all those other important assets, right? So in the money option, gain will be made out of money, loss at the money. No gain, no loss is made on the option, meaning the price you agreed is the price you still made in the market at the future date. Determinants of option value. According to Black Schools, there are five variables to determine the option value. You know, we've just been talking about option values. Have you thought about how to financially derive that value? Now, that is where you, you come in. You are not the holder. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> you are an ICANN student and you are the accountant. So now you are thinking on behalf of the holder. 